Kentucky has been the center of heroic stories over the years, and this is certainly one for the history books. In 1850, an era was nearing its end. The presence of elk across the countryside. With hardly more than 900,000 people in our state, more wildlife called the bluegrass home than farm families, but not for long. On the rolling landscape, the very last of our native eastern elk were being hunted out. These were the days of unregulated hunting, giving many the notion that wildlife was in endless supply. In reality, not just our majestic elk, but white-tailed deer, bison, black bear, and many other animals were paying a price. Fast forward 150 years. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife is long established, setting season dates, harvest limits, and following through on a quest to restore species eliminated from earlier days. With success under its belt already with deer, river otter, peregrine falcon, bald eagles, and the wild turkey, the next would be one of the largest game species on the continent, the Rocky Mountain elk. But many obstacles loomed. Answers came in the form of an alliance. It involved the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Commission, and perhaps an unlikely group, the coal industry. For elk, for Kentucky, the stars aligned. And through town hall meetings, an overwhelming 99% of people in southeastern Kentucky gave a thumbs up to the project as well. It was 1997 and Christmas came early. Our first seven elk were a gift from Kansas. The date was December 18th. Gathered at the Cypress Amax Wildlife Management Area in Perry County near Hazard, 4,000 locals held their breath. Busloads of school kids watched history in the making. I think this is one of the most wonderful things that's ever happened in eastern Kentucky. And an optimistic governor, Paul Patton, did the honor of unlatching the gates. This was the first time wild elk roamed freely in Kentucky since Abe Lincoln was president. Over the next four years, more than 1,500 elk were captured in western states, including Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona, and relocated to eastern Kentucky. Restoration continued until March of 2002. By then, the herd was strong enough and genetically diverse enough to sustain itself. The success of this restoration is due largely to the citizens of southeastern Kentucky. And Kentucky sportsmen and women are key in its future, working each year to help keep their numbers in check. The first one is Tracy Cerise, C-E-R-I-S-E. -E. Kentucky's elk hunting heritage returned October 6th, 2001. This is the first elk taken in Kentucky in uh, over 150 years. That first hunt saw six bulls and six cows harvested. And there's been a steady increase each year since, culminating in 2016 with 521 elk harvested in Kentucky. Yes, elk hunting has returned and hunters are taking advantage. Over the last 15 years, hunters succeeded at a rate of about 65% and they're harvesting record book elk. The top 10 elk in Kentucky history books all score over 365 inches, a trophy in any state. Elk in Kentucky are thriving and arriving at this historic moment wasn't easy. It was the most extensive elk restoration ever attempted in the United States. The present day 16 county elk zone spans 4.1 million acres, 
exceeding the size of Yellowstone National Park. And the Commonwealth of Kentucky takes pride in knowing that it's home to the largest elk herd in the eastern United States.